You guys want to know how to find gold? Well, today I'm going to teach you locating hot spots, gold hot spots. And along the way, I'll give you all the tips and tricks I know of to get you started. Now, rule number one for trying to find hot spots on gold prospecting, you got to go where it's already been found before. Now, I know that sounds rudimentary and simple, but a lot of people don't understand that in order to find gold, you got to go where it's already been found before. And the reason why is because the old timers were very thorough about finding gold. Their lives literally depended upon it. And if you go where they were, chances are you're going to find gold too. The biggest question we get is, how do I know what land I can check without claim jumping? Now for that, I would recommend going to a place called mylandmatters.org. Now a lot of you guys have heard me talk about this in the past, but we have some new folks out there that aren't aware of this stuff. It's a really simple site. I'm going to go over how to use it. All right, the first thing you're going to do is click on the land matters. You're going to see all the little links at the top. Look for the one that says maps in the top left hand corner. What you're going to do is you're going to click on that and that's going to give you all the information that you need this is going to be the page that comes up and look to the right hand corner you're going to click on mines then under mines you're going to click on united states gold mines when you click on that it's going to open another tab that shows you all the gold mines in the united states and this is a great reference because you can actually see where the trends and the belts are running when you zoom in on that, you're going to get all these orange dots. Each one of those dots represents a gold mine, and it has the name next to it. So that way, you can look up the name if you need to. Now, on the right-hand side, you're going to click Topo. You're going to click Public Land Survey. Remember, this is a static system, and you have to refresh it. Now, hit the little icon, and you're going to see all this information pop up. You're going to see all the commodities in the mine database. Click on that and the USGS report will come up with all the supportive information on the mine. What you're looking for is the commodities and materials information. If you see gold in these boxes as a primary and in the ore, you're on a winner. Next, you look through the entire page and find out if there's any additional information and comments that can support what you're looking for in the mines when you get there. At the top right hand corner, you're going to see map. Go ahead and click that. It's going to take you directly to Google Earth. It'll show you exactly where the mine is at in high definition. Now, if you go over to mindat.org, put in the name of the mine into the search box. When that comes up, you'll find all the information. And if you want to search other mines, the top right hand corner is perfect for that. The information that'll come up is all the information on that particular mine. It's going to give you the location and it's going to show you all the mineral images that are associated with that, hopefully with photographs. It'll also give you information about the mine's history, which is extremely important. And it's also going to give you a commodity list that is very important as well. Gold has to be on that list. Go back to Land Matters and look at the mining claim section. Click on a state. We'll say Arizona. Now down in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see land status. Click on both Land Manager and Public Land Survey System. Blue is state, yellow is BLM, and clear is private property. So what you're going to do is click on the MRDS box. What that's going to do is bring up these little orange little buttons. If you click on it with the little I button, which is information, what that's going to do is bring up additional information about the mine back to where you were before. A detailed list of all the active claims is down below. Claim name, assessment year, section, and claimants is the people who own the mine. Go back to the map. Each square represents a square mile. You're gonna cut that into quarter sections. Pick the quarter section that you're researching to find out what claims exist there, so you'll know what land is available. In this example, we're looking at section five, which has a total of 20 load claims in it. The area that we're interested in is in the southeast corner. If there are active claims in a section, the box will be colored blue for load, and orange for placer. Hover your mouse over the section you're interested in. Then click the I for information over on the right. You're going to look up everything that has a southeast to it on the right and the name of the mine to the left. You're going to use that information by clicking the county recorder's office. This will be the county recorder's office that the actual claims were filed in. Here you can request a copy of the map and the claim information of all the claims that you have written down in the section that you're interested in looking up. Find out what claims are active and their specific location. You'll use these maps to determine which land is claimed and which land is open and available. You can go to the county recorder's office in person or you can request it online. Now, a real quick side note here. A lot of you guys out there who aren't familiar with the channel have been asking me, Jeff, why do you keep talking about red worms? What is that all about? Well, down here in the sump, which is the lowest part of the mine, we punch through into a layer of clay seams that has a tremendous amount of gold in it. And we have a feeling we're sitting on top of clay layers that eventually punch into a cave system, a very famous cave system. And while we were doing that, we encountered a very large, unusual red worm. We were digging down, something decided to come up and say hello.
Now we did as much research as we could on what it could be. We still don't know. The closest thing we found was there's old research papers that indicate that during the time that there was an inland sea here, there was definitely some kind of large worm creature that was living down on the ocean floor, the seabed. If I got any paleontologists out there in the audience, would you please let me know what I'm dealing with? Because I have not a clue. Whatever it is that's down there hasn't seen the light of day for about 50,000 years, if not more. And I don't think it needs daylight to live. And keep in mind, there's two types of claims out there. There's patent and unpatent. The difference is, is the unpatent claim, you only have access to the minerals. That's it. You're just leasing the land from the government for the minerals. If you have a patent claim, you literally own the land. You could build a house on it and you put fences around it and keep private property on it. Unpatent, anybody and their uncle can come on to your claim. So keep that in mind if you are out there looking for a claim and you decide to buy one. And something else we hear a lot of is guys want to go out there and get a gold mine so they can start making millions of dollars. It doesn't work that way. Best thing to do is keep it a hobby. When you're filing for your claim, you're either going to file as a recreational use, which is hobby, or you're going to file in a commercial use. There's a huge difference between the two and a lot of money involved. Now I know a lot of folks out there use Google Earth to try to find old gold mines and old workings but sometimes that can get a little bit daunting because of the overgrowth and there's a system out there that's going to make your job so much easier. It's called LIDAR. LIDAR stands for light detection and ranging. It's a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of a pulsed laser. It's sometimes called laser scanning or 3D scanning. The cool thing about LIDAR you can actually see where the old timers were chasing these veins or leads as they used to call them. You'll actually see the prospect pits and the cuts and so it'll be easy for you to draw out straight lines to follow those leads and to actually find either parallel veins or to find extension veins on that. It's a fantastic way to find hot spots that nobody else has even thought about looking for. For those of you out there that aren't computer savvy and you don't feel like making your own templates to overlay on Google Earth, there's a gentleman out there that goes by the channel of prospecting geologists who will be more than happy to make you one upon request for only 10 bucks. At least that's what it was upon the time of recording this video. And if you want to know step by step how to do it yourself, he even made videos about that. I'll leave a link down below so you can check out his videos as well. Now for you guys that live out in Australia, there's some sites out there that are perfect for you guys to find some of these old reefs and leads that these old timers were chasing. One of them is called Geovic and I'll leave a link down below. It's a fantastic site and it's free to use as well. And the nice thing about it is, is that you can upload it to your phone and use it in the field and actually put your location in there so you know exactly where you're standing at when you're using it. And GeoVic works great with either Google Maps or Google Earth. Another one for you guys out in Australia is a site called Historical Gold Maps. It's a great resource to look up areas that have been prospected and mined in the past. This is put out by a channel called Goldfield Guide. I'm going to leave a link down below so you guys in Aussie land can check it out. And by using it, you can actually find out where you should be looking to find your own hotspot. And last but not least is a company called Avenza Maps, Victorian Goldfield Atlas. This is fantastic for you guys in Ausland trying to find out where the old timers had worked. Some of these areas are easy to spot, but others are not. And you can actually see where they had all these prospect pits, cuts, and trenches trying to find the leads in the reefs. So those are my tips on how to find your own hotspot for gold prospecting. I'd like to hear what you guys use out there. Find your own hotspots for gold prospecting using online sources. So start up a conversation and leave me a comment down below because I'm sure a lot of other folks that don't know would love to hear it. Yeah. Let's go down there and take a look, see if we can find it. Ooh, I think I got it. Hold on. I got something. Of course, there was a pop up right now. It scared the pants off me. I can pan with my shovel. <laughs> yeah, let's see you do that. <laughs> 